Hey, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about matte caps because I've been practicing sculpting in Blender lately and I wanted a nice bluish green matte cap for my character. And I know I could have searched around online and maybe found something close to what I wanted, but I decided to make my own. And in this video, I'll explain how I did it. So let's get into it. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Matte cap is short for material capture, and it's a material that includes lighting and reflections, which makes it really useful for sculpting and also for doing viewport renders for your work in progress images without having to set up a camera and lights and do any actual rendering, which I discussed in one of my older videos about viewport settings and viewport renders. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you want to check it out. So the first thing you need to do is create a sphere. So I'll hit Shift A and go to Mesh. And you could use a UV sphere or even an icosphere. But I typically like to use this round cube for most things. But if you don't see this option in your menu, you'll need to come up here to Edit and Preferences and go to Add-ons and search for Extra. And then enable Extra Mesh Objects and then save preferences and close the window. And now when you hit Shift A and go to Mesh, you have more options in your menu. So I'll select this round cube, and you see it gives me this nice quad sphere to work with. So I'll come over here to the menu and set Arc Divisions to 20, and then I'll right click and Shade Smooth. And then I'll come over here to the Modifier panel and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier, just to make sure the sphere is completely smooth. And now I'll hit the number 7 key on the number pad to jump into top view. Then I'll hit Shift A and add a camera. And then I'll hold down Control and Alt and hit the 0 key on the number pad. And that will move the camera to my current viewpoint, looking straight down on the sphere. And with the camera still selected, I'll go to Object Properties and set the lens type to orthographic and set the orthographic scale to two. Next, I'll go to the output properties and change the resolution values for X and Y to 1024 by 1024. So now I have a square camera view. And you could set these values higher like 2048 by 2048, but higher values will produce a larger file size when you render. And it's just not necessary. 1024 works just fine. Now to get the camera centered on the sphere, I'll go to the side panel and in the item section, you can see that the camera is not at zero in X and Y. So I'll go ahead and change both of these values to zero. And now the sphere is centered precisely within the camera view. But if you zoom in, you can see that the sphere isn't filling the camera view completely. There's a little bit of a gap here. So I'm going to scale it up just a little bit until the sphere goes slightly past the edge of the camera view. Something like that should be fine. So now I'll hit zero on the number pad to jump out of camera view and set up some lights. But before I do that, I'll hit N to close the side panel. And then I'll bring my cursor up here to the upper right corner of my viewport. And I'll hover it here until I see it change to this plus symbol. Then I'll click and drag out a new viewport. And I'll hit the zero key on the number pad to switch to camera view. And I'll change the viewport shading to rendered display. Now back over here in this viewport, I'll hit Shift A and add an area light. And I'll move it up above the sphere and scale it up to create some softer lighting. And I'll come over here to the light properties and change the shape to disk. And this will be my main light source. But right now I have an HDRI image that loads at default every time I open Blender. And I want to disable that. So I'll come over to World Properties, and right here where it says Color, you see the HDRI image that I have loaded. 
So I'll click on that and then click here to remove the link and I'll set the color to black. And then I'll come over here to the render properties and scroll down to film and uncheck transparency. And now with my light still selected, I'll go to the light properties and I'll bump the power up to 100 for now. Next, I'm going to add some more lights around the sides. And to do that, I'll hit Shift D and make a duplicate of this light. And then I'll drag it over and rotate it. And then I'll move it down and position it so that it's pointing at the center of the sphere. Then I'll make a duplicate of this one and move it over here and rotate it around so it's facing the sphere. Then I'll move it down so it's sitting at Z0. Then I'll switch my transformation orientation to local so my gizmo will align with the light orientation. And I'll rotate it up so it's pointing at the center of the sphere. Then I'll duplicate this one and move it over here. And then I'll rotate it around and move it down a little bit. And then rotate it up so it's pointing at the sphere. So that's my basic light setup. I'll make some more adjustments in a minute, but right now I'm going to create a material for the sphere. So I'll select it and go to the Material Properties tab and click the New button to create a new material. And I'll name it Blue Green. And for the base color, I want a sort of pale bluish green. So I'll set the RGB values to 0.613 for red, 0.8 for green, and 0.787 for blue. And I left the metallic set to 0, and I set the roughness to 0.25, and that gave me a sort of wet clay material. And now I need to make some final adjustments to my lights. So I'll select my main light, and I'm going to bump the power up to 200. And I'll change the color to an RGB value of 1, and 0.987, and 0.805, which gives me a pale yellow color. And for the side lights, I'll select this one and make it slightly red with an RGB value of 0 0.632, 0 0.292, 0 0.326. Then I'll select this one and make it slightly green with an RGB value of 0 0.438, 0 0.677, and 0 0.406. And then I'll select this one and make it slightly blue with an RGB value of 0 0.288, 0 0.322, and 0 0.736. And I'll leave the power set to 100 for all of these. And now I'll select my main light and hit Shift D to duplicate it. And I'll drag it down underneath the sphere and rotate it 180 degrees. And I'll scale it down smaller and move it over to the side of the sphere to give it a little bit of rim lighting. And I'll make it a slightly orange color with an RGB value of 0 0.736, 0 0.522, and 0.381. And of course you can make your material and lights any color you want. This is just what I chose for this matte cap. And now I'm going to scale my main light up a little more. And I'll drop the power down to 150. And I'm also going to move it up so it's farther away from the sphere. And I'll select my rim light and drop the power down to 30. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now for rendering, you can use Cycles or EV. It doesn't matter. I typically use Cycles, so I'm going to leave it set at that. And I won't change any of these other settings. I'll just hit F12 and render.
And once it's done, you'll want to come up here to the image menu and click Save As. Then give it a name and save it as PNG format to the folder where you keep your mat caps. And if you don't have a folder, just create one and save your file in there. I already have mine saved, so I'm going to close this window and save my Blender file. And then I'll jump back over to the file I was working on. So you want to make sure you're in solid display mode. Then click on this drop down arrow and switch lighting to matte cap. Then click on this gear icon to open up the preferences window. And in this matte cap section, click the install button. Then browse to your matte cap folder and select the matte cap you just saved. And then click install light. I already have mine installed, so I'll close this window and close this window. And now when you go back to this viewport shading window and click on the matte cap display, you'll see your matte cap here. And if you click on it, it'll be applied to your model. And if I spin the model around, you can see I'm getting these blue highlights up here and the red highlights coming in from this side and the green highlights coming up here. And since I set the material roughness to 0.25, I'm getting some nice shiny highlights all over. So overall, I think it's looking pretty good. But you can always go back to that MacCap file that you saved and continue tweaking the settings to dial in exactly what you want. And if you want to create more MacCaps, you can make a copy of that MacCap file because it already has the sphere and the camera and lights and everything already set up. So all you have to do is make some adjustments to your material, change the color and power of your lights, and then render out more matte caps. So that's about it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.